We heard a lot of rumors at the end of 2023 that Bob Iger and Kevin Feige were finally going to solve their MCU problems. Basically, the MCU fell apart in phases four and five and certainly never even got started on Disney+. Plus. And now they are going to officially start unfucking the Marvel Studios system that basically put them in this terrible quandary to begin with. The old Marvel way apparently is no more starting not only with Deadpool 3, but also with the production on the upcoming Daredevil Born Again series. Scooper Casey Walsh tweeted that Deadpool 3 is following Bob Iger's new Marvel mandates. Walsh says shots and sequences have been locked in much earlier than previous films to allow the CGI teams more time, and there will be no last-minute VFX changes during the process. Walsh responded to another tweet that doubts the July 26, 2024 release date for Deadpool 3, due to the VFX, but Walsh makes it sound as if Iger's mandates will make sure Deadpool 3 gets released on time in July. And that is going to be a very important date because this is not understating the importance of Deadpool 3 to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is the most important movie that they've made since Avengers Endgame. Basically, in phases four and five, Marvel have lost all momentum whatsoever. They actually had their first string of bombs obviously culminating with the Marvels at the box office, actually bringing in less worldwide than the Hulk did back in 2008. The Incredible Hulk was not exactly the enormous box office smash they probably hoped it would have been at the time. And it's absolutely shocking that Marvel absolutely stooped this low, but they were taking so many shortcuts. They are not able to rely on so many great storytellers, so many great visionaries, so many great directors anymore. They are going out there and they're hiring less talented people so they put new mechanisms in place, specifically starting with Deadpool 3, to ensure that they don't fall behind schedule. So ensure that they don't have to do three and four rounds of reshoots just to get the story correctly at the last minute. They actually have to come in with the fully written and completed script. That was not happening in the past. A lot of times with Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios in the past, when they begin principal photography, there actually wouldn't be a completed script or they would be doing last minute rewrites which would throw off the entire process. The good news is, is Deadpool 3, while it is an MCU movie, really isn't a Kevin Feige production, and it's probably a good idea that they put a pause on basically everything, pushed it out of 2024, and are concentrating on this movie because this is their one chance to make sure that they get it right again and get people excited for the MCU moving forward. Deadpool was an enormous success over at Fox. They acquired Fox because they wanted the X-Men rights, and certainly along with that came Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds. As much as we love him, we think he's hilarious, and maybe he didn't do a great job as Hal Jordan in Green Lantern. you got to admit that one. He does a hell of a damn good Deadpool, and he also picks out a hell of a talented team to run the ship. And in the past, Ryan Reynolds has done a damn good job of making sure that his productions actually get through as far as Deadpool. It's known the Marvel way of doing things is basically doing things on the fly, Often projects are greenlit without the script being finished, which is thought why when James Gunn took over DC, he said projects would only happen with finished scripts. The Marvel way is also said to see scripts finished while filming and projects finished in post-production. We'll fix it in post when they use CGI and other VFX teams essentially to finish the movie, which cost a bundle. And obviously there was an enormous blowback on Marvel Studios with the way that they were treating their VFX team. In fact, Marvel Studios and Disney are the main reason that these VFX studios decided they needed to unionize because they didn't like the added pressure in what Marvel Studios under Kevin Feige were doing to them. Obviously, we know at that time it was mostly Victoria Alonso's show because she was, in fact, in charge of their VFX and post-production, all that stuff. And it put an enormous stress not only on the entire production, but certainly the VFX. And we saw so much bad CGI during phases four and five of the MCU. You just think about that MODOK from Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. It just looked like garbage. A lot of the CGI within Thor Love and Thunder did not look good, did not look finished because this was all happening at the very end of the production. Hell, half the time, they don't even know what the hero's powers are going to look like when they go into filming this stuff. And you wonder why all this stuff blew up and why they are concentrating so heavily on Deadpool essentially being a brand new start for Marvel Studios for the MCU to actually go out there and regain customer trust. There's other things going into this. Obviously, we are seeing the leaked photos of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in the gold and blue costume, which we've never seen on the big screen. That's going to be a big moment. We've also seen the photos 
of James Marsden as Cyclops in the comic book inspired cartoon costume, you know, from the 90s and all that stuff. So they are also using Deadpool as a way of introducing those elements of the Fox X-Men universes into what they're going to be doing within the MCU. We know that they're going to expand that out and they are going to be introducing a full-fledged X-Men team. Now, do I believe we're going to be getting Hugh Jackman and James Marsden and some of those other actors, like maybe a Patrick Stewart in their original roles? Absolutely not, but they are using those as cameos for member berries for nostalgia bait to get you interested in there before they relaunch their full-fledged new X-Men universe. So this movie really is the linchpin if they're going to make it to Avengers 5 and it ends up being King. Whether or not it's going to be successful, a lot of that will rely on the success of Deadpool and whether or not people are actually going to trust Kevin Feige in Marvel Studios once again. But it's not only their movie production that needs to be fixed. They have never gotten their television production right whatsoever. We did have good television production at Netflix, never translated to Disney+. Plus. In fact, for a very long time, they wouldn't even acknowledge that the Netflix Daredevil stuff, Defender stuff, Jessica Jones luke cage iron fist they wouldn't even acknowledge that it was a part of their canon they've changed their tune and they are going full on that this disney plus daredevil born again series is actually a continuation of that universe daredevil born again restarts production monday after a lengthy hiatus philip silvera who acted as stunt and fight coordinator on the netflix version of daredevil returned to the fold to act as stunt coordinator and second unit director for the new series his hiring is the latest example of the retooling born again underwent as it was changed from a legal procedural to something that aims to harken back to the gritty and violent tone of the first well-regarded series. It also reaffirms the show's focus and less on heavy and costly visual effects. That was one of the most frustrating things that I've ever seen in my life. You went out there and you brought back Charlie Cox. You went out there and you brought back Vincent D'Onofrio. Well, we're going to act like the Daredevil Netflix series, which is far superior than anything anyone at Marvel Studios has done on Disney+. Plus. We're just going to act like that never existed. And we're not actually going to give the fans what they want. If you bring these characters back, if you bring these actors back, we want it to feel like the Netflix Daredevil series because it was absolutely awesome. And you don't need all the heavy CGI effects. It doesn't need to cost $280 million for one season of the program because it was so gritty. It is very smart to go out there bring back the stunt coordinator, bring back the guy that was doing some of the second unit directing and see if we can capture some of the flavor and some of that feeling of what made it such an enormous success to begin with and why people are clamoring for Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio to return as Daredevil and Kingpin, to return as Matt Murdock. This is very smart stuff. Do not ignore the stuff that worked so you can reinvent the character and make him the yellow Daredevil that's basically just a bitch boy like he was in the She-Hulk series where he's taking the walk of shame. That's not who Daredevil is. That's not the character that everyone loved. They needed to retool everything, and it appears, at least at this point in time, that they realized maybe the MCU isn't the way to go. Maybe going all new, all different with the Marvel characters isn't the way to go. We actually have to go in, bring some stuff that's worked from the past, make sure that we can make it work again, and then build off of that. Additionally, not only are Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio reprising their roles from the Netflix series of Daredevil, Matt Murdock, and Kingpin Wilson Fisk, respectively, but John Bernthal is back as the vigilante known as the Punisher. Deborah Ann Wall and Eldon Henson are rumored to have been hired to reprise their roles as Karen Page and Foggy Nelson, key members of the Daredevil supporting cast. The show will not be 18 episodes that was first announced or that of a typical broadcast network season, but it will be more in line with the original Netflix series model of lower episode counts. And this is all great news. If you like that Netflix Daredevil flavor that they brought, that was so much different than what they were doing on the MCU. What was so much different than what Marvel were even doing on ABC with like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It was darker, it was grittier, it was more grounded in reality. It was more street level. And that's what made it really pop. That's what made it really stand out from all the other stuff that they were doing. Yes, bring back John Bernthal as Punisher. He was absolutely amazing. You can probably spin this off into another Punisher series, but this time maybe we'll get that one right because I do think they kind of fumbled the character Although, admittedly, Marvel are doing everything they can to kind of separate themselves from that Punisher character and that Punisher symbol, at least in comic books. But I'm really happy to see Eldon Henson returning as Foggy Nelson. I thought he did a great job. He was the perfect angel sitting on the shoulder of Matt Murdock, trying to make sure that he didn't go off the edge and go too far and all that kind of stuff. And I thought Deborah Ann Wall 
also did a great job as Karen Page. And it also sounds like we're getting the actor that was playing Bullseye on the Netflix series. So I think they're making a lot of, of really smart moves. What were they doing at Netflix that was working? Oh, they got the casting right? Let's bring the cast over. Should we really start everything over? Should we act like that never happened? No, absolutely not. That worked. People liked it. We need to bring that over and hopefully incorporate it correctly into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, even on Disney+, Plus, which has been just an enormous failure. And if they get this right, I think that they do still have the chance to bring the fans of the MCU back. They still have a chance to make it work on Disney+, Plus, and I do think they still have a chance of getting people excited for another Avengers film and Avengers 5 and leading up to Avengers Secret Wars, which sounds like it's going to be a full-fledged reboot and we'll see all the heroes that we all wanted, but all at the same time. They won't be quite so segmented. You know, we'll get the X-Men at the same time as we get the Avengers first appearing and all that stuff, which will be even more exciting if they can actually nail the landing all the way to the end of this iteration of the MCU before they have a chance to reboot. This all sounds great on paper and I love hearing these reports. Obviously, the proof is going to be in the pudding. If Deadpool 3 sucks, well, they're going to have missed that opportunity and they're going to have flubbed their biggest, most important movie since Avengers Endgame. If Daredevil Born Again does not feel like Netflix and it just feels like some Disney-fied, pussified version of what they were doing before, well, people aren't going to trust them. But right now, they are at least making changes and that's the least that we can ask for at this moment in time and hopefully they nail all this stuff. If you would like more pop culture content, from yours truly, but along with my good friend Aaron Sparrow, we have additional content over on the Patreon. If you have not checked that out, especially if you're a comic book fan, lots of comic book content there as well. If you haven't seen it, there's a link in the video description. I definitely invite you to check out the Patreon because I think there's more content there that you're going to love.